Now, despite holding six people um, over the death of young soldier Imoro Ibrahim, uh, no charge of murder has been leveled against these people by the police service. Rather, the charges bordering on robbery and dishonestly receiving have been leveled against the accused persons. The six uh, today were in court. Uh, uh, now, two of them were named in an official statement by police as persons who attacked the deceased in, uh, with the aim of stealing his phone and backpack um, when the incident happened. Court correspondent Joseph Akable reports. Of the accused persons, Samuel Tete and Abubakar Sadiq, have been slapped with the charges of conspiracy to commit crime, namely robbery, and the charge of robbery itself. They are alleged to have accosted a soldier and attempted to rob him of his mobile phone and backpack. The four others, Ibrahim Abdul Rakib, Safiano Musa, Yusuf Mohammed, and Abdul Gafaru, are facing the charge of dishonestly receiving. Ibrahim Abdul Rakib is alleged to have purchased the phone of the deceased. At a price of 300 CDs, he subsequently sold the phone to Safiano Musa for 350 CDs. The police say Safiano is being evasive as to the whereabouts of the phone and claims to have sold it to Yusuf Mohammed for 500 CDs and later to Abdul Gafaru Abdul Karim. The police says investigations are ongoing to attempt to recover the phone. All accused persons pleaded not guilty to these charges and were denied bail by the court. This was after they had failed to indicate to the court where exactly they resided at Ashaiman. Lawyer for four of the accused persons, however, has some concerns about the processes so far. There is no iota of evidence brought to the court today to even warrant charging my clients with the offense of murder. Not even the robbery that the first and second accused persons were charged. So my client was simply charged for the offense of this honest receiving, and it's simply because the police or the prosecution is saying that some of the foods believed to be owned by the um, late Sheriff Emuro were sold to my clients. And this is a situation that any of us can fall victim to, especially if you don't buy foods from the shops. You can be there, they will come and sell any item to you. That is what is landing them in this situation. But let no one take them as murderers. No. Thank you. You placed an application for bail for them by the court. Yeah, yeah we, we knew from the onset that it was going to be a tough one. Remember, this case has so much public interest in it. And so on the first day, it's always difficult. The case is back in court on 27th March 2023. We're getting more from court document filed by police prosecutors. Court correspondent Joseph Akable joins with more. Joe, uh, what more do we know about these six suspects? The details we are getting from the court documents. Mm -hmm. For the first accused person, that is Samuel Tete, we are told he's a 20-year-old and he's unemployed. And the second accused person, Abubakar Sadiq, is also 20 years. He's a scrap dealer. Then the third accused person, Ibrahim Abdul Rakib, is also a scrap dealer. Safiano Musa is a trader. Yusuf Mohammed is also a scrap dealer. And the final one, Abdul Gafaru Abdul Karim, he is a driver. Mm. Now, the charges against them seem to be new to people, for those of us who don't know much about law. But tell us about that. And so in terms of the charges that have been leveled against them, and so first has to do with the conspiracy to commit crime, namely... Uh, robbery uh, and the substantive offense of robbery itself and we know that the substantive offense of robbery is a first degree felony uh, for the other individuals the charge against them is dishonestly receiving and this particular offense operates in the sense that you have received something which is a proceed of crime and so its determination of how it will be ranked as a crime will be dependent on what a substantive offense is so in the event the substantive offense is stealing then it will be treated as stealing if it is robbery to be treated as robbery as well mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, uh, we also understand that uh, there hasn't been the, you know, charges of murder, um, you know, filed against this report. Tell us any idea why the murder charge hasn't been filed yet? So there are two explanations that have been offered by our sources within the police investigations. The first is the fact that investigations are still ongoing. And once it gets to the level where they are ready to proceed with the main charge of murder, they will do so. The second reason they've given is a practical legal difficulty in the sense that assuming they were prepared to charge, if you read the facts closely, you realize that it was only two of the accused persons that actually accosted the deceased soldier, the remaining four simply because of the movement of the stolen mobile phone. Mm. 
And so the question is that in the event they were going to charge the two with murder, it would have meant that they would have had to do the indictment starting at with a committal proceedings at the district court. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, in terms of the offense of dishonestly receiving, they could have opted to do it at either the high court or the circuit court. And so it, it will create a situation where you could have parallel trials ongoing at the same time. And that is what we understand could eventually happen. But for now, because of that practical difficulty and the fact that they also still investigating the matter, they are opting to file these charges now and later on they will see what they can do about it. An interesting point to make on the issue of bail was the fact that the courts, when they had asked for bail, the courts had asked them to identify where they live and it was even difficult for the accused person, some of them, to mention specifically the address or where specifically they lived and that's what influenced the court's decision to opt to remand them in custody. And so they remain in custody and we understand that if at any point the investigations get to the level where uh, the state prosecutors are prepared to level the charges of murder, they will do that because we've seen in other cases where mm. uh, the other offences have been tried separately and the murder charge being handled separately. Okay, grateful to you. Now let's bring in ranking on the Interior and Defence Committee of Parliament, James Agalga, uh, who joins us via Zoom. Now grateful to you, Honourable, for joining us. We understand the committee will be visiting us, Shaiman. Uh, just give up the scope of your mission there. Um, well, the scope of the mission is to, first of all, um, engage with the victims of the military brutality uh, that was um, inflicted. Mm. We need to engage with them, see the extent of injury suffered by those um, innocent people, then after that, of course, we will uh, visit the family of the um, deceased soldier mm. who was buried a couple of um, days ago. Um, after that, we would then make a determination uh, based upon the evidence we would have uh, gathered whether um, a case could be made for the state to consider the um, option of paying compensation to um, the victims of the brutality. Mm. That is our mission for now. You know, all we have uh, seen or heard mm -hmm. is based on videos that went viral and, and, and basically hearsay. You cannot work with hearsay as a committee. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's imperative that we visit a shaman and uh, uh, see things for ourselves and then take a decision. Okay. Now, now that the police have taken some suspect to court, um, is it still prudent that the people who suffered these brutalities still explore the option of going to court against the military? Well, I mean, it's their right. I mean, the right to go to court to vindicate their rights cannot be taken away from them. Mm. So that is one um, angle where the victims could uh, seek redress. But from our uh, perspective at um, a committee of parliament, basically ours is to um, exercise oversight. Mm. What were circumstances that must have led to the military high command sanctioning uh, an operation which eventually resulted in excesses that they themselves have admitted? Then we want to uh, make recommendations with the hope that uh, those recommendations would re forestall a future um, reoccurrence of what we saw in Ashama. Mm. So uh, our mandate is very clear. I mean, we are supposed to exercise oversight. We definitely are excited that the police have been able to arrest a number of suspects. It is our hope that eventually the prosecution would yield some dividend, which they should eventually lead to uh, convictions. If, if indeed the uh, suspects were the ones who committed the atrocious act. Mm. Mm. You, you met with the de defense ministry and, and the, the Ghana Armed Forces that, last week. What did they tell you? No, they admitted that the um, operation was sanctioned by the high command. Uh, but then the excesses is what we are looking at. They regretted that the um, operation resulted in excesses. Mm. 
you know, and, and so the point is, uh, how do we deal with issues of professionalism? I mean, in the future, would, would they uh, uh, take responsibility for uh, the excesses, given that this was a sanctioned operation? Mm. And so there are issues we, we have to interrogate, which is why we'll be visiting a shaman. Okay. Uh, that is the first step. The uh, uh, next steps after our visit is to deliberate upon uh, um, the information we would have collated. Okay. You know, okay. following our visit, then we can take appropriate decisions moving forward. Okay. Honorable James Agaga, we, we're grateful to you that you could join us here on our news. Let's uh, join the Member of Parliament for the area, uh, NS Nogbe, on the phone lines. Uh, he has been talking about the latest development on this case. Grateful to you that you could join us. Now, you are asking uh, the Attorney General to be swift in how it prosecutes this case. Why not allow the case to travel its natural course? Well, thank you very much, and good evening to your viewers as well. Yes, uh, the case will still take its natural course, mm. uh, but what I'm uh, requesting for is uh, swift, I mean, uh, prosecution of these people, because uh, that is the only way Sam can return to Shama as well as even the uh, families of the people. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, there are times that cases of this nature remain or uh, collect dust on the shelves of the the, the AG or even the court uh, for a very long time. For instance, uh, we have a, a case at hand now that is the murder of one of our colleagues, uh, MP, in mm -hmm. 2015 or 2016, there are about. As we speak now, uh, nothing is being done, justice is not served yet. Uh, in this case, I don't want the same thing to happen. I want a sweet, uh, I mean, a prosecution of this matter so that at the end of the day, the families of this diseased soldier, and even the military themselves, and everybody in Ashama will be at peace. And that is all the more reason why I'm asking for the, uh, uh, the uh, expedite action okay. on the matter. Now, in the same statement, you're asking for an independent body to investigate the human rights abuses that by, committed by the military men the other day. Why is this still necessary when the military has come out to say we are sorry, when the police are still investigating and have, in fact, presented some six people, uh, you know, uh, to, to court today? Yeah, these are two matters, two different matters. Well, the first one is the arrest of the criminals, uh, the people who murdered the, uh, the, uh, the soldiers. Mm. Uh, that is one aspect. And the other aspect is the invasion of the military in the uh, uh, community of Ashama by molesting and brutalizing innocent civilians. Now, the bipartisan committee uh, will investigate the brutalization and the molestation mm. of civilians in Ashama, the invasion of military into the, uh, I mean, uh, civilian territory by brutalizing them. That is the, uh, 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 the bipartisan approach that I wanted us to adopt. Okay. However, the, the arrest of the criminals it's, uh, it's in the purview of the police and the prosecution is also at the Attorney General's department and which has been done already. I must be frank with you, I have to commend the police, the IGP himself, who was on the ground in the night of the arrest. It was here midnight uh, to effect the arrest. The Tema Divisional, Tema Regional Commander, the Ashaman Divisional Commander and the District Commanders, they, they did a human job by arresting all these six uh, suspects. Mm. But this, that is me. We have two different issues at hand. The first is the molestation of the, uh, the civilians, and then the second one is the killing of the, or, of the, of the soldier, okay. uh, which the police are dealing with. The bipartisan should deal with the, uh, the molestation and then the invasion of the civilian mm. community. The other day you were talking about petitioning Shraj on this matter. What was the status of that petition? Yeah, we are still uh, gathering, collating the data. Uh, we are, yes, the military have admitted that there were excesses when they came to Ashaman. Okay. And so we are seeking for compensation for some of the victims. Because as I speak to you yesterday, I met some of the 34 victims. I mean, almost all of them, mm. including the 150 that were released earlier. And if you see the nature of brutality that they meted on these people, Mm -hmm. You marvel, you cry even for the people are discharging blood through their private parts. Mm -hmm. 
and people, people's intestine at the hospital, at the general hospital as we speak. I have to send money to some people to be able to buy drugs, etc. They are hospitalized. When you see those things, you, you will be surprised. You, you will think, I don't know. So we are seeking for compensation for all these people. If they agree to do the same, uh, I don't think we will we, we, we'll further pursue the matter. In any case, if we pursue it to the latter, then it means that we wanted it to, sh to be a deterrent for military or any other officer or any other uh, security agency mm. to invade a, a, a civilian territory and molest them. Because mm. it will not be peculiar to Ashiyama. It will be uh, 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 to, for the whole country. It has happened in certain areas already, and we want to curtail that one now and for all so that it will not happen again in any circumstance, under any circumstance. Ernest Nogwe, I'm grateful to you for joining us. Uh, that's the Member of Parliament for the Achaiman constituency.